This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm hanging out in Nashville, Tennessee, and my friend Suzanne Santo is hanging out in California, I believe, right? Oh, that's where I am, yes. <laughs> How's life out Indeed. west in the wild, wild west? It's super fucking weird. I can say fuck, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I figured. Okay, I was like, is this rock and roll? Uh, it's, you know, it's weird. It's, there's some helicopters going right now. Don't know if you can hear that. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> They're always after me, you know? Um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, I feel, other than the fact that we've had these crazy wildfires lately, um, I, can, I still go hiking and like can, can go for walks and be outside and California is a beautiful place. So I, you could be quarantined in worse places. If I had the funds, I would have done the like rent a flatbed truck thing or buy a flatbed truck and just turn it into a stage and just like roll through people's neighborhoods <laughs> and just like rock if you want to, you know? Just roll down the street, hit up a cul-de-sac, I don't know. <laughs> a cul-de-sac would be like is like the man-made version of a reprisal. It's like, you know, you're coming back around. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you do your encore. <laughs> you like go with it. Yeah. Well, let's get down to business, Suzanne. If people aren't familiar with you and your awesome personality, you're obviously in two part one of two parts of Honey Honey. You have a solo yes, record sir. out that came out and you uh, was produced by our rig rundown friend Butch Walker. Ruby Red. Legend, that guy. Oh, he's a yeah. great dude. He actually, like, he just <laughs> came back to Tennessee. He was in California, now he's in Tennessee for, for some time, I'm sure. To I know! I haven't seen him in ages, and I, he just did that haul across the country in an RV, and I was like, ah, it's just, I miss my friends, you know? <laughs> it's tough, but he, Nash, Nashville has claimed yeah. him. Yeah, and then, uh, obviously, you had spent time in Hosier's band, and they opened for him on the yeah. tour. And uh, people did. might even know you from the Joe Rogan podcast, your time with Honey Honey, <laughs> with Ben, and then uh, most recently, I believe, with Gary Clark Jr. So Wow, you, you really got it all down. More fans! Come on, Suzanne. <laughs> I, thank you so much. I'm honored. I like never expect anyone to know that stuff, so thank you. Well, That's very cool. Well, let's dive right into it. I think the point we need to start about is the guitar that you're playing, and you started the intro. I believe that's an Eastman, right? It is, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan. I, this is um, in their SB series, and you know, I'm so terrible because I always forget what it, it's like SB and a number. 59. Um, yeah, thank you. I just call it my sweet baby. So I, what I love about this guitar is one, it's fucking awesome. And two, uh, it has the same finish as my violin that they, that I also have by Eastman. Um, and I just think they're an incredible mom and pop company. I love to support them. They support me and I'm very lucky to have this guitar. It's, it's my main jam. How did you get hooked up with Eastman? Um, I have, I probably shamelessly reached out to them. I don't know. It's been years now. We've we've been buds for a while. Um, but they, yeah, they are just they're out in Pomona, so they're about an hour from Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, their their shop is there, um, and you know, if anything, you know, I my electric guitar foray is pretty new, so like only a couple years. I was playing banjo, acoustic guitar. So I, you know, in a lot of ways, like for all the like gear heads and like, you know, real guitar players out there, I, I, I hope I don't let you down, but you know, I, I kind of grew up with Eastman. Like they've, my first guitar uh, was one of their jazz archtop series. And I played that uh, opening up for Willie Watson and the White Buffalo. I did a, two tours opening up by myself for these guys. And I brought that guitar with me and um, it really kind of cut my teeth on just figuring out, like I, it was really sloppy in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had my electric guitar uh, training wheels with Eastman and they've just had my back and like helped me figure out what, what you know, to, the right moves to make, you know? Yeah. Cause there's so much you can do. And like, I, I always feel embarrassed cause I just, I don't know a lot. I just know what I'm, figuring out in that moment so yeah but this is my this is my favorite guitar what have you figured out and, and you enjoy about it because i know through the hosier experience and other stuff i've seen you perform with like i've seen you with the dan electro i've seen you with the thin line telly so what yeah what, i love the thin what line. do you have you enjoyed about the eastman and like specifically since this is a humbucker guitar what do you like about yeah. it? what have you bonded with it well i mean this thing is like a tanker you know it, it has like it's just so heavy handed and it has like, it 
it cuts. Like I did play a telly for a while. I still play my telly sometimes. Uh, mm. It's buried in my closet right now. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Fender. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling they'll figure it out. I mean, I it's like right now, just the sound I'm going for is it's working with with you know my Eastman and then my 335. They both have a similar um, energy to them. And uh, but yeah, I. I, I played the my actually my bandmates uh, ninety five thin line telly for a tour and I loved it. Uh, it fed back a lot with what we were trying to do. It was just kind of they were competing a little bit. It competed with uh, he plays and SG. Um, but yeah, this one just kind of marries with the sound that I'm going for right now in my band. It's it's like a trustworthy instrument. What do you? Does that? Does that? <laughs> well, well, yeah, you got to have trust in your instrument, but. Also, your abilities, and what are you doing for like the new record? I, I don't know if it has a name yet or even a release date, but I know that you, songs right. have trickled out, so it, it feels like you're inching towards a second release. So, have you used this guitar on that? And is it more oh, electric? Yeah. Is it you know more folk towards Honey Honey, or how how would you characterize the no. songs? Yeah, it's definitely got a rock and roll vibe. Not as not as intense as Ruby Red. Uh, it's kind of working title is yard sale because it's a little bit of everything and it's you know it has something for everybody it's like you want your crock pot and your tennis rackets and also this vintage record collection you got it <laughs> like it's, it's just and also i love yard sales so there you go um but yeah i mean there's we used on the record um i used it, there's a lot of, like i used the strymon pedals quite a bit and Chase Bliss. Um, we got some real, really cool space sounds out of Chase Bliss. Um, I think I used this guitar and then the, my producer, John Spiker, um, who you would love. Man, what a gem. Magic, magical human. Um, I used a bunch of his guitars and he had, he had a vintage, I think, 335 as well. So you can kind of tell I sort of orbit around the same mm -hmm. stuff for the most part. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I, I'd like to get your, uh, uh, you seem like a sponge. And so I'm curious, you've worked with a lot of people, whether it's Ben and Honey Honey, Butch, when he yeah. produced your record, and then obviously with Hosier, like how, how do you, it's always good to pick up new information from someone you're collaborating with and learn from. Yeah. And I'm sure you, they would say the same about their experience with you. So guitar wise sure. or gear wise, have you pulled anything from your time with these, you know, these other oh, artists. absolutely. Yeah, no, I definitely, um, I'll be the first to tell you that I'm always learning. I'm not, uh, I never feel, I'm a master of none, you know, and, um, you know, Hosier the most was like, I was an apprentice, you know, and I, it was one of those experiences that, you know, we were playing on such huge stages and the, um, the pressure to like deliver is very high. You know, you can't, I can't be sloppy like I am with my own shit. It's somebody else's show. Um, and their guitar tech, this guy, Mert Murphy, legendary. He teched for the Cranberries and he's teched for Hosier for a really long time. I actually used a lot of his vintage pedals, which was like, I mean, incredible. He, he had a lot of T-Rex uh, pedals and just like stuff that he's had for a long time. I also accidentally blew up some of my own pedals when I went over there for my first rehearsal for a way I, for a, I kind of, uh, there's a little bit of a graveyard in my closet that I need to uh, revive. But um, I what? did, I learned a lot. I, I, <laughs> I, you know, in terms of playing, I, I had to play a lot of Hosier's parts that he played on the record. So I would, you know, I wasn't like shredding solos or anything. I was I was really doing a lot of picking um, in combination with his his playing, which is incredible. Uh, and it, I'll be honest, it, you know, he has these like really long fingers, and he has a really odd way of playing. So I had to really adjust. I was actually like icing my hands a lot after rehearsals because the just the the muscular technical part was such a challenge. But it like. I leveled up after that tour or that year with him. And it was something that it's like pretty invaluable to me. Um, and even then I still feel like a hack. Like, I, I don't know what the fuck I was doing there. And what, like, I don't know. I, I I'm sure they figured it out. <laughs>
<laughs> well, your fingerstyle but, playing is great. Like it, it, you have your own, thank your, you. your own, your own process and your own, uh, I guess, attack on it. So it, it's, it's. Thank you. You speak through your hands just as well as you do through your well, lyrics. Well, I, I started doing this thing, and I don't know if this is a bad thing or not or a crutch, but I, I started getting my nails done, which I never ever used to do, and it's this, uh, it's called dip, and it's like a powder. And it's, it's a lacquer that stays on for three weeks at a time. And it's my natural nail. And I just stopped using picks. And I just use like this kind of. And then they look kind of nice <laughs> on top of it. I used to have pretty gross fingernails. I didn't give a shit about them. And then at one point, I started realizing that these are just like guitar picks. But now I'm kind of stuck with them. So I'm trying to figure out if I should, you know, wean myself off the, the lady nails. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're who's to say? they're utilitarian because not only do they look great, but they they serve a purpose. Well, I used to be a real snob about it and go get them done, and then COVID hit, and I had to figure. I had to like I bought all this gear. Like I have a nail drill, and I I have the the whole like you know arsenal of shit that you need to do your nails. And I started watching YouTube videos, and then I just started doing them myself. And you know it's mainly because of guitar playing. Like I could have let it go, but I was like, well, wait, I gotta be able to pick <laughs> so adapt as they say yeah well do you mind uh, introducing this to your 335 okay 335 you're up i love this guitar i actually got this uh on the hosier tour and it's a uh, big fan of gibson i love gibson guitars um i think it's it's got a it's like red with black trim so i think it looks kind of slutty <laughs> It's got this like like lingerie look to it, I think. Did you, so I'm, did you I'm just body? Kind of, I think you just body shamed your guitar. I I kind of did. I did. Well, first of all, she's comfortable with herself. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's got an um, the action's pretty low on it too, so I really it's really out of tune right now. But um, but yeah, I I love this thing. I I also. I busted this out on the Hosier tour, really got acquainted with it. And you know, for all intents and purposes, like it, it was always scary to bring a new guitar out on those stages because like it was, it was pretty nerve wracking. Like I would, I would get nervous often that like if I messed up and you know, cause I just wanted to do such a good job for my teammates and for Hosier. Um, so, you know, when we would sometimes do fly out dates and I, we would have rented gear it was always such a challenge. So like when I introduced this guitar on the, on that tour, I remember like at first like being nervous and then it was like such a staple. Um, I played it on a few different songs and you know, it was, uh, I still love it. I play it all the time. Now I know uh, Hosier has played and uses a lot of interesting open tunings because we did a rig rundown yeah. with him and Mert actually uh, when they played at the Grand Ole Opry a couple years ago. Get out! Yeah, we got to meet, we got to meet the mighty Mert. <laughs> You waited this long to tell me? Oh my God. Easter. That's amazing. That's an Easter egg. We call that an Easter egg. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Cody Bradley, who was my guitar tech that came in um, with Mert. And he's incredible. Uh, just shout out to Cody. He taught me a lot too. Hell of a guitar player himself. Well, yeah. Right on. <laughs> thanks for the help, Cody. But um, yeah, what, thanks, Cody. I was curious, to, I was parlaying that bit about Hosier and his open tunings to see how, uh, what you typically tune in. Do you play open tunings or are you standard or what do you use? I used to do open tuning quite a bit. I would do drop D um, and I haven't in a while. Um, it's funny. I don't know. I just, uh, I laid off. But when, when I first started playing guitar, um, I, th I think the first like tune I learned was in drop D um, from my teacher at McCabe's in Santa Monica. And I can't remember his name. It'll come to me. But but yeah, I'm, one of our my favorite Honey Honey songs that we wrote together is called Come On Home. And we pretty much closed every show with it back in the day. And um, I started that one and I started it in, oh, in drop D. And it, it was like, that was like, you know, those were the days. But no, I, I guess I don't really do it that often these days. Okay. I accept the challenge though. I'll do it there because you told me to. <laughs> You're like, I didn't tell no, you. No, I didn't do say it. anything. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> this is all my calls are coming from inside the house. You know? <laughs> well, do you have a specific setup of strings that you use, Suzanne? Uh, like string company or gauge? I 
don't, and I'd like one. Uh, but I, I, st I stick with 10s and 11s for the most part. I vacillate between the two. Most, mostly 11s, though. Right yeah. on. And I guess, yeah. uh, and then uh, the last question before we move on to your amp is, what do you like about the 335 in comparison to the, the solid body uh, Eastman? What, what, what makes you go to the, the 335? Hmm. Um, God, they're so similar. It's, it's a little roomier. And then the necks, I don't know, the neck has a different feel to it. Um, I play this one on the like louder, trashy rock songs. Um, for some reason, it just like, it's bandwidth for, for the volume and with my pedals is it just, it hits harder for some reason. Um, uh, I feel like my Eastman is a little more versatile, but I can't tell you why. See, these are the things that I'm just like, I don't know. I just know how it feels. <laughs> well, sometimes I hope that's okay. No. Yeah. But like sometimes the, the technical, technical definitions and reasons get in the way of actual logic, you know, cause we get in our own head. Well, yeah. this might supposed to do this because it has this, but really right. in, in actual use, does it, does it translate? Does it work? Right. And that's more yeah. important. Mm -hmm. So don't, yeah. don't feel bad. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, it's funny. I like, I, I'll be, again, I'll be the first to tell you, like, I don't know a lot. I just know what I like and how it sounds. And when I dial in my pedals and you know, all that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> well, right on. Uh, maybe we can have you put back on the Eastman, and then we'll start talking about amp, your amp, and then we'll move into the pedals. Is that cool? Great. Love it. All Love right. It. All, all fun stuff here. Okay. Okay. You're on the sidelines. You're back up. Okay. <laughs> um, I just got, I just went to this um, really great guitar tech here in L.A., um, Maddie Barolo, is that how you say his last name? I just call him Maddie. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not familiar. Um, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself and say his name wrong, but he just fixed up my guitars and he's a lovely, lovely human. Um, he was freaking out over the Eastman. It's just like, yeah, it's Barolo guitars because he makes his own. Uh, he does these like really cool vintage remakes. I'll come back on that just to make sure I didn't butcher his last name okay yeah <laughs> um okay you want to talk pedals let's well, let's start with amp first because it'll be quick because you only have the one I, i've seen you when you uh performed on well on stage but also like audio tree you used to use small vox combos and i don't know if that was like a uh, that was a house okay amp. okay yeah, so yeah 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 have you always been a fender person because uh alluding to the fact that you're using a fender princeton right now you know actually i did I did use a Vox in the beginning and it was, you know, no, no disrespect to Vox, but it was just like what we had from Honey Honey's like, this is like what we had. I, my Princeton is, it has everything I need. Um, it's, I love this amp. Um, I, I haven't really experimented much with vintage amps, but I do have a Filmo sound that I want to film projector that I want to have turned into an amp but it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to like hold off until I'm, you know, touring again. <laughs> but yeah, I love the Princeton. Um, you know, a lot of times when we do big festivals or, or big outdoor stages, I'll, I'll use a deluxe okay. that they have on hand. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, this is, I love this thing. It's, it's permanently in my living room for nonstop rocking. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that something you would tour with or, you know, assuming you're not playing bigger stages, but is that, a, would you tour with it or would you get a bigger amp? Oh yeah. I, I like the Princeton. I tour with it. Yeah. Okay. It's great. It's great. Well, right on. I think at this point, let's just start talking pedals. I, I, I'm curious to okay. what you, I'm curious to what you got on the pedal board and how you use it. So just talk to me about what's going on down there. Okay. Well, you know, Right now it's set up strictly for guitar, but I usually have a looper that loops in my banjo and my fiddle so that I can use a lot of the same effects, which I, which is really fun. Um, but I've got, um, a walrus luminary, which is an octave pedal. Uh, I love this pedal. It really sounds like it's just the whole, sorry, it's my beat. like 
the sustain on it. it it's just, it's, not, it's very churchy and I love it. Um, uh, this is kind of a newer pedal I have. So I, I only use it on like one or two songs, but, um, do you know what that in can, do you know what songs? Which songs? Yeah. Do you know like one of mm -hmm. like songs you use it on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, new tunes that I haven't released yet. Oh, but uh, okay. I have this. Yeah, yeah. I have this new song called Mercy that uh, it really sounds beautiful. On. It's probably not translating through the Zoom right now, but it's. It's really great. I love this pedal. Um, I've got a ruby red pedal, obviously. Yeah. Um, Does it's the Butch the Butch Walker GHS? Is that uh, is that like part of like his welcoming package? You get like a box of chocolate, maybe some coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he's very generous, and I mean, they they gifted it to me, and I'm very very grateful. I use that a lot on the Hosier tour as well. Uh, it's a staple. I I never not. I, I never want to not see it on my board. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's a beautiful pedal. I use it on my fiddle all the time. I was going to say, do uh, you use it, that on uh, Blood on Your Knees? I sure do. Come How'd on. You... Nailed it. Well, wow. It's like Thank that, you. It's really distinct because the first time you listen to it, it's like, is that a slide guitar? And then you, you take that second listen and you're like, no, that's, that's a distorted violin. God, that makes me so happy. That's, that's what I wanted was it for it to not, to, to be a questionable instrument of like, is that, what is that? Yeah. Um, I love it. I it's it's so much fun to play the fiddle through that pedal. You, I it's I probably annoy the shit out of my neighbors because I'm just like <laughs> you know <laughs> they can suck it. But <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a good neighbor. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I also have an Avalanche Run Earthquaker, which is. Um, I think I was messing with it the other day, so I, it, it might be super weird right now, but yeah, it's on reverse right now. It makes these great outer space sounds, um, but also, you know, if, if I tone it down a little bit, um, just the, the reverb alone on the Avalanche run is just fills up the whole room. I use that a lot on the Hosier tour on his song it's called wood w o u l d i believe <laughs> i got to check out the spelling but it's not what you think it is um, <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sorry i'll i'll be the first to perv out here by the way uh safe space safe space, safe space okay. yeah yeah so i guess i could say that this board is primarily jhs um i also have the color box now how do you use that because that's like a unique pedal that can be really versatile because it's not only it's supposed to mimic like an old preamp but it also has like xlr in or i guess out so you can yeah it's well it's it actually pedal. mimics it, it mimics uh, mimics a Neve console, so yeah. it's got it's it's definitely like a studio pedal. But I play it live all the time. I love it. It it, get, it has this like crunch. Uh, I kind of took it down a little bit. You'll hear it on the recording. It is kind of a preamp. I mean, I use it as a preamp, but it, it just, it's, I don't know. I don't even know what's happening inside of it. I just know that I love it. And in conjunction with the spring tank reverb, uh, they, they get along really well together. Um, I often use my spring tank reverb with my Strymon tremolo flint pedal um, for the like harder songs. I, I like Strymon's reverb. Um, the, the Flint has, you know, the tremolo and the reverb on it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a tendency to ditch the reverb on that and use the spring tank. It, it, it just has a, I don't, I don't know if it's like a more like trebly thing that's happening, but I feel like it cuts. And then for softer, quieter songs, I use the Flint reverb and tremolo in conjunction. Gotcha. Um, but you know, I like to mix and match. Could we hear? The, could we hear the 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 spring tank with sure. with the flint and the tremolo? Totally. Yeah. 
Totally. It's a little crunchy right now, but... And I'm out of tune. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then the, I guess the difference was if I go back to the... I feel like the the re, the way I have the reverb dialed in on the flint is like it's just a little gentler of an approach mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna be a respectable player in tune up. <laughs> While you're doing that, I will request and I'll set up the fact that we, we, we gave Butch's due on the pedal, but I'm curious of how you use it, uh, the Ru going back to the Ruby Red. Like, what, how, mm -hmm. like, we didn't get to really hear it, how you have it set and how you use okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I use it um, uh, mainly as a boost for, like, I never really have it throughout a tune um, just because it's so powerful and I have it dialed in so it really kicks up, like... I mean, it's so crunchy right now. Yeah, but, that's stanky. Um, that's, that's it's. I love it. I, you know what? And I think without the, uh, I had the uh, color box on too, so it's. It's. I usually have one or the other. It's such a great pedal. God damn it, I love that thing. Well, and, and, and maybe you can't remember it, or you use some other stuff, but like the new, I don't know if this is out yet, uh, Fall for That with Gary Clark Jr. is like a real mm -hmm. heavy, raunchy yeah. stomper. Uh, did you use any yeah. of these pedals on that? Um, you know, we used, uh, I believe we used the Chase Bliss Tremolo for like, I mean, obviously Gary's shredding. I'm, I'm playing just the, you know, the bass guitar on that one. Mm -hmm. Um but uh not the bass but you know what i mean the the rhythm main guitar yeah. track um you know that gary didn't use any amps or i didn't use any pedals he just went straight through his amp and he just like makes his guitar sing in his own way i don't know how he does it it was so amazing to watch him play straight into the amp no pedals well a lot of the times people will say that you know that's an ongoing debate and it's would be the bane of our existence would be uh, the hands versus gear debate and there just yeah. shows like his, his discipline and how he can control his dynamics with his hands is it's incredible I'm so lucky that he played on that song I, I can't even tell you I can't thank him enough and it's just like he's, he's a legend but yeah um, I had s that one's pretty clean in terms of like we didn't do a lot of pedal work and stuff okay. we just like went straight to the rock so <laughs> what about um, Bad Beast? Now, I don't know if that's recorded. Like, uh, uh, that's recorded, right, already? The Bad Beast song that you guys did together? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And what about yeah. that one? I, um, yeah, he didn't play on that one on the record, but um, I definitely... What did we use? I think we might have put it through a big muff. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I played all the, all the guitar tracks on that one. I was really pumped about it. Which is like something I never used to do, you know. I, I'm like I said, I'm still kind of a new guitar player in that sense, and I'm kind of used to people playing for me, uh, and it's been really liberating to keep getting better and like to do it myself. And um, that ta that track in particular, I'm really proud of that I played all the guitars on it and um, baritone and stuff. We we did a lot of layers, but. Um, I think we also, we might have put the ruby red on, on Bad Beast. It's a little foggy because it was a while ago. <laughs> That's got to be really gratifying, though, to, to feel that growth and then to hear it also on the recordings now. You can feel that growth that you're, as a player. It's got to be really gratifying. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, um, that song in particular started with the riff. It started with the, you know, the... I was actually... Ironic 
thing was um, John Spiker and his wife have a house in Lake Arrowhead and they let me go hang there by myself for a weekend to write. And I started writing the song in their cabin. So it felt really cool to like do that song with him and, you know, also been offered the the place to create it. You know, it was really cool. <laughs> well, uh, Suzanne, let's get back to your pedal board. We kind of had a sidebar there. So what, what else is on the board that you want to talk about or throw, give give some love to? Um, I mean, my, my Zuma Strymon power supply is pretty reliable and lovely. Can't, can't, uh, disregard that element because you know I've definitely had uh power supplies just crap out on me on stage or you lose a channel and like um that's never fun mm -hmm. as you know um you know for the most part that's that's pretty much it I mean um I have a walrus fuzz pedal but I've been going back to the ruby red just because I know it's not a fuzz but like it just it I think Ruby Red in conjunction with a good reverb really, really gets me to where I need to be. Gotcha. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the board. Ooh, also the, the Earthquaker Afterneath, it's not on here, but that's my other favorite uh, space sound alien pedal. Yeah, that definitely <laughs> is an alien pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, do you know Mason Stoops? Yeah. Yeah. He used to, he used to work, yeah. he used to work for Premier Guitar. Ask him about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he I, he introduced me to the Afterneath a while back, and I, I, I think he might have had a hand in its creation, but I, I could be speaking incorrectly. But, yeah, big fan of that pedal. <laughs> well, that's awesome that you have a connection with Mason. Yeah, he, he worked for Premier Guitar, and he's a, he's a great dude and an even better guitar player. Well, and I guess I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask and give love to the other instruments you play. Do you, I know that for your banjo and your violin, do you, do you have like a DI, or how do you play that live? going through the PA yeah so I, when I have my fiddle I I usually sp I split the signal so I ha it goes into a DI um, with a line out, out direct to house and then I also put it through my amp so I can use my effects pedal so mm. um, you know give or take when I can afford my own tech it's usually great if I'm on tour and it's a new person every night sometimes they hate me because they're, you know, they don't want to deal with the mix. But, you know, if, if you want to be excited about it, it's an opportunity to have a fucking awesome violin sound. Uh, you know, really trying to sell myself here. But, um, but yeah, I use an LR Bags DI, acoustic DI, for the fiddle and the banjo. And it's, they're phenomenal. I love them so much. Um, I use their pickups for my fiddle. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, the... Being able to marry all the instruments together has always been a challenge and usually annoys the shit out of somebody that's working with me. <laughs> but it, it's gotten a lot better over the years and like I love playing all the different instruments. So, you know, getting to put my fiddle through the ruby red just like I do my guitar has always been pretty great. Yeah, I love that. I love that as I found out listening to your record and, and bonding with it and spending some time is that yeah, you don't have uh, hard and fast parameters for your instruments. Like, if you want to rock with the violin, you'll rock with the violin. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I've been playing a lot of violin lately, too, just uh, mainly to, like, calm my nerves. <laughs> Is that, like, your, it helps. your first or main instrument, or, or what you learn on guitar? I know that you took music in, in high school, and that kind of took you off. Yeah, I, um, well, when I was really young, we had piano lessons from this lady down the street, and we would, like, all three, uh, I, you know, uh, two sisters, well, three, half-sister, but the three of us would, like, get our, like, little folders with our sheet music, and we'd walk down to, can't remember her name, and uh, we'd all take our piano lessons. I barely remember anything. Uh, and then in fifth grade, I went to public school, and... Uh, the violin, when you're in fifth grade, you can pick an instrument like, you know, flute, oboe, violin. And uh, my poor parents, my God, what a, <laughs> what a doozer to deal with that. Um, but yeah, we, uh, I ended up getting pretty good at violin and then I got a scholarship to my high school. And, you know, but looking back, I, I'm so lucky that my public school offered that to me because I, I think about it a lot like I'm not really sure where I would be if I weren't playing music yeah. you know and it, it I don't it, it was just like it was free 
you know, that was the thing. Those were the days. Things like that were free. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then when Honey Honey started, I played a little bit. I played guitar for a bit. My, my dad has this incredible 70s Alvarez acoustic guitar that uh, is with them right now in South Carolina where they, they live now. Uh, but I, I wrote my first song on that. I learned to play guitar on that guitar. It's stunningly beautiful. And uh, when Ben and I started Honey Honey, he was like, well, I already play guitar, so... No, he didn't say that. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> um, we, it was just the two of us, so we were really trying to, um, you know, facilitate optimum sound for two people, and he would play drums with his feet, and the banjo is a very percussive instrument, so, you know, God bless him, he really stuck with me while I was learning to play the banjo very badly for, for a number of years. And I feel pretty good about it now. I'm, I'm you know, I can say I, I'm a banjo player now. That's <laughs> good. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, Suzanne, yeah. I know a lot of this stuff is up in the air, but uh, I want to give you the opportunity to give people a chance to connect with you uh, or track down your music. Obviously Ruby Red's been out. Uh, you got honey, honey albums out. You got three of them, but what about looking awesome. forward? What, what can people expect from you in, uh, you know, the rest of the year and what, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I have this song, Fall For That, that's coming out September 18th uh, that Gary Clark Jr. plays on. Um, I'm really proud of it. Uh, it it keeps taking on a new shape uh, in terms of the current climate of, of our, you know, our world and politics. And um, essentially, the song is about um, not falling for this, uh, collective angst and anger and just kind of trying to live your own life while also, you know, being a good person and being part of the thing. But it's, it's really intense. I, I wrote it a couple of years ago and it, it's really like taking on a, a meaningful shape that I, I wasn't really expecting. Um, so I'm excited to share it with people. I'm also playing a hotel cafe live stream the night of the 18th, mm. September 18th. So, uh, with my full band. So it'll, it'll be like a real rock show. I'm so excited to play with them. Um, and yeah, I, I got some other songs coming down the pike. I did a song with Shaky Graves and, and then I'm just going to start like firing out my, my record, which is kind of turning into two records now. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have any idea if, if you'll release one or both this year or is that kind of all up in the air? It's, it's up in the air. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is it's all self-released and, um, uh, you know, financially speaking, I'm not really sure how it's going to pan out, but I'm, I'm excited to find out. I, I really feel grateful. Um, you know, there's a silver lining in all of this and, um, I, it's, it, it's not the same kind of releases as you would when you're on tour. Uh, it's, it's a d totally different vibe, but, um, I feel really good about the music and we'll see. We'll see how it all rolls out for you. But I, I am thrilled to share it. That's for sure. Awesome. Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to you if we get to rock out with your band later this month. And then, you know, as Thank people you. get to keep track of the music as you put it out, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time oh to hang out and do Thank this with you us. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Oh I, my God. Likewise. <laughs> oh, thank you again so much, Suzanne. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. <laughs>